Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Tom Hardy just dropped another first look teaser for Venom 3 with some big Spider-Man No Way Home references and Easter eggs. And because Sony's Venom universe of movies have gone full Morbin time, like Madam Web and Morbius basically cratered their crossover plans, there's been a lot of questions about how Sony and Marvel are going to continue to connect the Venom universe and all their spinoffs with the MCU Tom Holland Spider-Man movies heading into Spider-Man 4. And we've finally gotten some answers about that, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're probably going to get a Venom 3 trailer in the next couple of months because they have Craven the Hunter coming out before that, so they're mostly focused on promoting that. They do not want it to go full Craven time like Madam Web went full Morbin time. Sydney Sweeney, who was just in Madam Web, was just dunking on the movie during her SNL performance. You might have seen me in Anyone But You or Euphoria. <laughs> You definitely did not see me in Madam Web. <laughs> if it wasn't clear, all the Sony-led Spider-Man spin-off movies, Venom, Morbius, Craven, any other movie that they might do, are all meant to be taking place on the same Earth that Venom takes place on. As recently as last year, they had this master plan to cross all those movies over, but because of what happened with Madam Web and Morbius, they basically cratered those plans, and now they've kind of scrambled and changed things. I'll explain that later in the video. But this brand new Venom 3 teaser comes straight from Tom Hardy himself, who posted a picture from their last day of filming the movie. It's totally done now, pending some reshoots later this year. The scene that they're in the middle of filming seems like it's in front of the hotel where Venom was at the end of the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene and during the Spider-Man No Way Home post credit scene. And notice he's still wearing the exact same outfit he was wearing in the Spider-Man No Way Home post credit scene. He just doesn't have the Mexico hat on. That bar that he was drinking in with Danny Rojas from Ted Lasso, Football is Life, that bar was in the same hotel from the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene. At the end of the movie, he escaped down to the beach in Mexico. That was why he was wearing the hat during Spider-Man No Way Home, to remind people where on earth he was. At the beach, he checked into the hotel nearby, then Doctor Strange's spell transported him and the symbiote to the MCU, but he was still in the same hotel, just a different universe. That's why the dude was all surprised to see him in his hotel room, like, what the hell? The events of the Spider-Man No Way Home post credit scene took place right after that, and the idea is that he just wandered to the hotel bar after the dude yelled at him to get out of his room and got drunk with the bartender, who was explaining everything that had happened with Thanos, Avengers Infinity War, The Snap, the five-year time jump, Avengers Endgame, The Blip. Hey, maybe I, maybe I should go to New York and speak to this uh, Spider-Man. And apparently the bartender was also talking to him about Spider-Man because then he says he's going to head to New York City to talk to this Spider-Man. But Doctor Strange's second spell happens. Everyone forgets Peter Parker as Spider-Man and gets sent back to their original universes, including Tom Hardy's Venom, leaving a piece of the symbiote in the MCU so that Tom Holland can eventually get his symbiote saga from the comics. I know a lot of you are asking now, if Doctor Strange's first spell only transported people to the MCU who already knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, why did Tom Hardy's Venom come to the MCU? Because Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock had never met Peter Parker's Spider-Man. It was the symbiote itself that said that guy recognizing Tom Holland's Spider-Man after they had been transported to the MCU, not before. The whole reason is because of that Venom symbiote line when he's talking to Eddie Brock during the Let There Be Carnage post credit scene. When they're sitting in bed and the symbiote tells him about all the symbiotes having a hive mind, hive memory that works across the multiverse. 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes would explode your tiny little brain. It means that this symbiote in this Venom universe has the same memories from Tobey Maguire's version of Venom in his universe. So Tom Hardy's Venom symbiote is just remembering the events of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 3 as if he were that version of the symbiote, that version of Venom. So technically it was the Venom symbiote that was pulled to the MCU by Doctor Strange's spell, not Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock. The reason why Eddie Brock came along for the ride with the symbiote to the MCU is because of the way the symbiote's DNA intermingles with its hosts so they become one single organism. So they both got yoinked to the MCU, then sent back with the second spell. As for why the symbiote left a piece of itself, you can chalk that up to Sony just wanting more crossovers in the future. That'll become important in a second when I explain the future of Spider-Man and Venom crossovers. Basically, it's because Sony got Marvel to agree to let them do that. 
But if you really want to explain it from an in-universe logical perspective, you could say that the piece of the symbiote there is actually just a child, like a spawn of the Venom symbiote, the way the Carnage and say like Toxin is a spawn of the Carnage symbiote. Like this piece of symbiote is now a totally different organism from Tom Hardy's Venom symbiote. So I think the idea in Venom 3 is that Tom Hardy's Venom at least starts the movie immediately after he gets transported back to this universe. So that's why he's still wearing the same clothes. Like he literally just stumbles out of the hotel back in his own universe. Like, oh, I'm back. And as for Tom Holland's Venom symbiote saga, Spider-Man 4, more Venom crossover, Tom Holland is rumored to have some kind of cameo in Venom 3, but I'm not going to hold my breath with that. I think it's more like a Spider-Man type of reference in the post credit scene. Like, you won't see Tom Holland's face on screen. They'll just allude to more Spider-Man crossover at some point. This is all because of the war that's happening right now over the future of Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies, like Spider-Man 4 between Marvel and Sony. They were originally having a big argument behind the scenes about what the movie is going to be. And it turns out it's Sony who apparently wants to make Spider-Man 4 another major multiverse movie with universe-ending consequences, bringing back Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield as main characters in the movie with way more scenes than they had in Spider-Man No Way Home. Like, they'd be much bigger characters in the movie in general. So when Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man teased that he wanted to fight an alien after Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland referenced his Venom in Thanos, Sony was intending on paying that off in Spider-Man 4, apparently. And I think most of us agree that they'd probably be better off waiting till Avengers Secret Wars to give Tom Holland the symbiote so they could be more comic book accurate, because that's how he got the symbiote originally. Like, why not just do the comics? But apparently this drama between Marvel and Sony right now, Kevin Feige wants Spider-Man 4 to be a more ground level, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie with a brand new Spider-Man villain from the comics and then Kingpin and also Daredevil. But on the other side of things, Sony wants the movie to be this huge multiverse Avengers level film again with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back. Like if you thought the Spider-Man No Way Home was a big deal, they want to escalate things even further. I think in Kevin Feige's version of Spider-Man 4, Toby and Andrew don't come back until at least Secret Wars. There might be some Easter eggs in Deadpool 3, like some funny Easter eggs from their Spider-Man movies, but I don't think they actually appear on screen until Secret Wars. Now, supposedly what's happened is they've come to a tentative agreement to have some multiverse elements in Spider-Man 4. So there'll be a, like a little bit of what Sony wants, but a little bit of what Marvel wants as well too, like more ground level, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. What I think this is going to look like on screen is that essentially they'll just leave all the big multiverse stuff for the post credit scene, which I think is totally fine. Like you do the main part of the movie as a ground level Spider-Man movie. Like we've all been wanting to see Daredevil team up with Spider-Man, Kingpin in the movie in some kind of way. And in the MCU, they could just have Kingpin be the person to hire the Sinister Six team and put them together. And if Sony is going to cram in all these future multiverse Venom crossover elements, they just leave that for a post credit scene and they can figure out how that's going to work in their future movies down the road in a couple years. Speaking of Venom symbiote, if you want to do a Tom Holland symbiote saga, you obviously have to give the symbiote to somebody first before it comes to Tom Holland Spider-Man. Mac Gargan, who is the Scorpion, also wore the Venom symbiote for a while in the comics. During some future Spider-Man movie like Spider-Man 5, you can have him get the symbiote and he becomes a version of Venom in the MCU and then the symbiote comes to Tom Holland Spider-Man. Generally, if Marvel, if Sony aren't really sure about how they're going to handle stuff, you leave it for the post credit scenes, you make it kind of vague and it just gives them a lot of room to work with in future movies. Case in point, leaving a piece of the Venom symbiote at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home, like that could turn into anything they want. This year and the next couple of years are going to be like peak Spider-Man. There are like four Spider-Man movies and shows coming out this year. Then Beyond the Spider-Verse, Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4, 2025, 2026. So Spider-Man fans are going to be eating good for the next couple of years. Sony also just revealed they do have plans to do a live action Miles Morales movie too after Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out and a couple other animated movies they're working on. Like they're working on an animated Sinister Six movie with the Spider-Verse people animated in that style. You said live action Miles Morales is in the works. Not till we make two more movies. Yeah. <laughs> She's right. Someday. She's the boss. Someday. 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 We got to we we are very happy doing what we do. 
We don't know too much about what's going on during the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man series that's going to be happening later this year, except that it's taking place in another universe with some spins on Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man's backstory. Like, some of the characters are a little bit different. It involves Norman Osborn, a version of Harry Osborn, but you have Benedict Cumberbatch coming back as his Doctor Strange, and you have Charlie Cox coming back as his version of Daredevil, but you also have Nico from Runaways. So, like, there's this mixture of a bunch of different series that have happened in the past in live-action MCU stuff that's happening right now. So that's why they're saying it's a little bit easier just to consider it in another universe. We probably won't get a trailer for that till much later this year after X-Men 97 episodes come out. That's like the next big series that Marvel is doing in the next couple weeks. Of course, I will do episode videos for that. It is going to be crazy. It'll be a good tee up for X-Men characters before Deadpool and Wolverine come out. In addressing all the fallout from Madam Web, Morbius, and Sony's new plans to deal with all their Venom spin-off Spider-Man movies that technically don't have Spider-Man in them, their brand new plan now is to treat them each like they're a little bit separate and just lean more on the Tom Holland MCU crossover of it all. So even though the MCU is kind of slowly moving away from multiverse movies heading into Marvel Phase 7 after Secret Wars, Apparently, Sony is going to keep leaning on the multiverse stuff just to keep connecting things back to Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. We're supposed to get a new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer pretty soon. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Click here for all my new Deadpool and Wolverine videos and click here for my full breakdown of Dune Part 2 in Easter eggs, deleted scenes, everything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.